Today I'll be reading the opinion of the court in Mallory v. Norfolk Southern Railway Company, decided June 27, 2023. Justice Gorsuch announced the judgment of the court and delivered the opinion of the court with respect to Parts 1 and 3b, and an opinion with respect to Parts 2, 3a, and 4, in which Justice Thomas, Justice Sotomayor, and Justice Jackson join. This episode, I will only be reading the opinion of the court, which includes parts 1 and 3b. Imagine a lawsuit based on recent events. A few months ago, a Norfolk Southern train derailed in Ohio near the Pennsylvania border. Its cargo? Hazardous chemicals. Some poured into a nearby creek, some burst into flames. In the aftermath, many residents reported unusual symptoms. Suppose an Ohio resident sued the train conductor, seeking compensation for an illness attributed to the accident. Suppose, too, that the plaintiff served his complaint on the conductor across the border in Pennsylvania. Everyone before us agrees a Pennsylvania court could hear that lawsuit consistent with the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. The court could do so even if the conductor was a Virginia resident who just happened to be passing through Pennsylvania when the process server caught up with him. Now, change the hypothetical slightly. Imagine the same Ohio resident brought the same suit in the same Pennsylvania state court, but this time against Norfolk Southern. Assume, too, the company has filed paperwork consenting to appear in Pennsylvania courts as a condition of registering to do business in the Commonwealth. Could a Pennsylvania court hear that case, too? You might think so, but today, Norfolk Southern argues that the Due Process Clause entitles it to a more favorable rule, one shielding it from suits even its employees must answer. We reject the company's argument. Nothing in the Due Process Clause requires such an incongruous result. Part 1 Robert Mallory worked for Norfolk Southern as a freight car mechanic for nearly 20 years, first in Ohio, then in Virginia. During his time with the company, Mr. Mallory contends he was responsible for spraying boxcar pipes with asbestos and handling chemicals in the railroad's paint shop. He also demolished car interiors that, he alleges, contained carcinogens. After Mr. Mallory left the company, he moved to Pennsylvania for a period before returning to Virginia. Along the way, he was diagnosed with cancer. Attributing his illness to his work for Norfolk Southern, Mr. Mallory hired Pennsylvania lawyers and sued his former employer in Pennsylvania State Court under the Federal Employers Liability Act, as amended. That law creates a workers' compensation scheme permitting railroad employees to recover damages for their employer's negligence. Norfolk Southern resisted Mr. Mallory's suit on constitutional grounds. By the time he filed his complaint, the company observed, Mr. Mallory resided in Virginia. His complaint alleged that he was exposed to carcinogens in Ohio and Virginia. Meanwhile, the company itself was incorporated in Virginia and had its headquarters there, too. On these facts, Norfolk Southern submitted any effort by a Pennsylvania court to exercise personal jurisdiction over it would offend the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Mr. Mallory saw things differently. He noted that Norfolk Southern manages over 2,000 miles of track, operates 11 rail yards, and runs three locomotive repair shops in Pennsylvania. He also pointed out that Norfolk Southern has registered to do business in Pennsylvania in light of its regular, systematic, and extensive operations there. That is significant, Mr. Mallory argued, because Pennsylvania requires out-of-state companies that register to do business in the Commonwealth to agree to appear in its courts on any cause of action against them. 
By complying with this statutory scheme, Mr. Mallory contended, Norfolk Southern had consented to suit in Pennsylvania on claims just like his. Ultimately, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court sided with Norfolk Southern. Yes, Mr. Mallory correctly read Pennsylvania law. It requires an out-of-state firm to answer any suits against it in exchange for status as a registered foreign corporation and the benefits that entails. But no, the court held, Mr. Mallory could not invoke that law because it violates the Due Process Clause. In reaching this conclusion, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court acknowledged its disagreement with the Georgia Supreme Court, which had recently rejected a similar due process argument from a corporate defendant, citing Cooper Tire and Rubber Company v. McCall, 2021. In light of this split of authority, we agreed to hear this case and decide whether the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment prohibits a state from requiring an out-of-state corporation to consent to personal jurisdiction to do business there. Section 3B Pennsylvania Fire Insurance Company of Philadelphia v. Gold Issue Mining and Milling Company, 1917 controls this case. Much like the Missouri law at issue there, the Pennsylvania law at issue here provides that an out-of-state corporation may not do business in this commonwealth until it registers with the Department of State. As part of the registration process, a corporation must identify an office it will continuously maintain in the commonwealth. Upon completing these requirements, the corporation shall enjoy the same rights and privileges as a domestic entity and shall be subject to the same liabilities, restrictions, duties, and penalties imposed on domestic entities. Among other things, Pennsylvania law is explicit that qualification as a foreign corporation shall permit state courts to exercise general personal jurisdiction over a registered foreign corporation, just as they can over domestic corporations. Norfolk Southern has complied with this law for many years. In 1998, the company registered to do business in Pennsylvania. Acting through its corporate secretary as a duly authorized officer, the company completed an application for a certificate of authority from the Commonwealth in compliance with state law. As part of that process, the company named a commercial registered office provider in Philadelphia County, agreeing that this was where it shall be deemed located. The Secretary of the Commonwealth approved the application, conferring on Norfolk Southern both the benefits and burdens shared by domestic corporations, including amenability to suit in state court on any claim. Since 1998, Norfolk Southern has regularly updated its information on file with the Secretary. In 2009, for example, the company advertised that it had changed its registered office provider and would now be deemed located in Dauphin County. All told, then, Norfolk Southern has agreed to be found in Pennsylvania and answer any suit there for more than 20 years. Pennsylvania Fire held that suits premised on these grounds do not deny a defendant due process of law. Even Norfolk Southern does not seriously dispute that much. It concedes that it registered to do business in Pennsylvania, that it established an office there to receive service of process, and that in doing so it understood it would be amenable to suit on any claim. Of course, Mr. Mallory no longer lives in Pennsylvania and his cause of action did not accrue there. But none of that makes any more difference than the fact that gold issue mining was not from Missouri but from Arizona and its claim did not arise there but in Colorado. To decide this case, we need not speculate whether any other statutory scheme and set of facts would suffice to establish consent to suit. It is enough to acknowledge that the state law and facts before us fall squarely within Pennsylvania Fire's rule.
In the proceedings below, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court seemed to recognize that Pennsylvania fire dictated an answer in Mr. Mallory's favor. Still, it ruled for Norfolk Southern anyway. It did so because, in its view, intervening decisions from this court had implicitly overruled Pennsylvania fire. But in following that course, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court clearly erred. As this court has explained, if a precedent of this court has direct application in a case, as Pennsylvania Fire does here, a lower court should follow the case which directly controls, leaving to this court the prerogative of overruling its own decisions. This is true even if the lower court thinks the precedent is in tension with some other line of decisions. <laughs> We've come to the end of this opinion. Until next episode, thanks for listening to What SCOTUS Wrote Us.